We're a bit of an odd company, but an interesting company. Um, 68 countries, 27,000 employees. We've just sold our facilities business tie. Um, but um, we, we do um, anything from um, business to business services around pest control. We manufacture and uh, wash and supply uh, uniforms and linens to industry. Um, we do have a plant business. Um, strange, really eclectic mix across all the various globes. It's, it's quite, quite an interesting company, quite a bizarre company to work for. It also means that we get some really interesting pictures. So if there's anybody here squeamish, just don't look at the screen, okay? And uh, not many insects were actually harmed in the making of this slide set. Okay, so we've been with Google for five years. Um, we started in 2009, the early adopter. I think we were one of the first Google app users in Europe. And at that time, we had a big problem. We had 47 different disconnected email systems, and our chief exec was getting a bit upset that he couldn't actually communicate to anybody. And there's some real wonderful systems, and there's things like Merrick Ice Warp, I've never even heard of or seen of, and some, some of our developers have written their own email system, and of course we had a bit of Outlook and a bit of Microsoft and other bits and pieces. But we looked at it and said, well, look, you know, we need, we need a global director, we need to, chief exec needs to be able to send that communication, we are a global company for Christ's sake, we've got to be able to talk to each other. So we started to pilot in our Ambius business. Now our Ambius business is plants, tropical plants, Christmas trees, office scenting, pictures on the wall, um, I think Google occasionally buys some Christmas trees from us if we persuade them. Um, but they, they were um, 700 strong. They were a truly global part of our organization. And a nice little microcosm for us to actually test this system out, which was primarily around email and calendar and a directory. So the chief exec, Jeff, of the Ambius business could actually email all of his staff from his um, desktop quite happily. They also got quite heavily into using the, the Aslen version of Docs, which is far removed from, from where it is today but actually started to do things around um, central timesheets, um, quality control forms and stuff, and really loved this and really got them running. And uh, after about six months, he said, well, look, this is clearly going to work for us. We don't have to build any infrastructure. Um, it's a very quick and simple rollout process. Let's get going. Let's make a decision. Let's actually roll this out. In 2010, uh, very quickly, 10,000 users actually rolled out on this system globally. For the first time in Venticles history, Countries are able to talk to each other. Global address lists actually exist. Distribution lists exist. People can start working. And that was really based on email and a bit of docs, as it stood then. 2011, we pushed it out further. Uh, 18,000 users across hell of our business. And we start to look at um, integrating our intranet sites. Again, we had, I think it was 57 intranet sites. And again, every man and the dog were actually writing those things. Uh, now we've got one and it's in Google Sites, and it's integrated with our Google um, environment and Google Docs. And, and now, you know, all our information is actually sat in one place. It's controlled, it's shared, it's accessible, etc. 2011, um, developed mapping solutions. So we've got, um, again, integrations now with, with Maps and Geo. Um, and we've actually released Docs officially out to business. I think the first couple of years, it's really, it's there, guys. If you want to use it, use it. But we're not pushing this as an enterprise at all trying to get the business to understand some use cases around using it. And then in 2011, yeah, go on guys, it's clear, everybody used Docs. 2012, we completed our rollout. Um, at that time, we were 76,000 employees, 25,000 users. Um, a lot of our employees were cleaners in our, in our facilities business. We just didn't have access to that technology. Interestingly, today, uh, we're now a business of 27,000 users. And I think we have 26,000 mail accounts here. So nearly everybody in our company now is on an email system. And in the last year, um, we've really focused on rolling out into the, the uh, remote countries like the USA. We finally persuaded them and weaned them off of their Outlook environment. And they've just pushed 3,500 users out onto Google. Um, Brazil, Chile, when I work in South America, um, UAE, Turkey, lots of small countries now coming on board. And every small business that we buy, the first challenge we always get is, you know, how do we get these guys joined up? Well, give me a list of names, I'll set them up, they'll be done this afternoon and right and running. And the big thing for us, um, which has been led really by the business, is um, the use of Hangouts in Google+. And I think you saw some of that just now with Amy's presentation, but a lot of this slice set will focus on how we're actually using that, how the business are using that to actually drive their employee engagement. So before I came, I just had a quick look around the various Google Plus sites that we, we have. And we have this phrase, breaking the ice around 
how, how we share information with our employees, how we actually drive collaboration, how we actually drive engagement. Engagement is the key thing. You have really engaged employees. You have a very productive company. So I did a quick look around the sites, uh, I think it was last week, a couple of bizarre things. One was I was um, patiently trying to video a laundry plant in um, France last week on a factory tour. And I came across this great machine which actually irons and folds things. Um, it's 500 garments a minute, uh, an hour it does. It's a great machine. You just sit there, you just put it in the front and it comes out shrink wrapped at the back. It's great. My wife's ordered one already. <laughs> The other, the other thing I came from, we, we think about pest control in the UK and the challenges that we face with rats and with mice and big hairy spiders. Apparently in Asia they have house, house pythons, and I thought house pythons are about this big. But as you can see from the house python there, I think there's eight people holding it from end to end. And this was dragged out from somebody's kitchen. Apparently it's the time of year they decide to go in the house because it's nice and warm and damp and great place to live. And the other really bizarre thing I came across on our marketing um, Google Plus site is that we've opened a pest restaurant, which I think is probably recycling gone slightly mad from our business perspective. Um, and, and I believe there'll be one coming to a town near you very shortly. But it's the latest marketing campaign where we actually can serve up, um, I think it was pigeon burgers and millworm lasagna, fried crickets, um, chocolate dipped ants. Um, apparently very popular. Um, and we're just thinking, from a business perspective, you know, we're hooving up all the stuff on our customer sites. We just repackage it. Cook it it's, it's a great opportunity. So, on to the serious stuff. So, um, we, we deployed this as an email system. Uh, and it's actually a collaboration tool. And we gave the business this thing. So, let, let, deal with it what you want. See, see, see how you can use this. There are things you're trying to do as a business that we think you can simplify things that are probably very low down on IT's radar to actually deliver, but actually give a lot of benefit back to the business. So a couple of questions for you. First thing is, um, what, what's the most scariest pest you guys come across? I'll give you a list. Bed bugs, cockroaches, and spiders. We'll start with bed bugs. Show of hands. Scary bed bugs? Cockroaches? Spiders? See, snakes? Yeah, see? It's actually 64% of the population think spiders are the most scariest thing that we actually have, even little house spiders. Right, what's the most bizarre um, smartphone app you guys have? Anybody got something that's really bizarre? I mean, bizarre in a good way, not bizarre in a bad way. <laughs> but um, iPhone, iPhone apps, Android apps, nobody going to confess to anything? I've got one that counts flies. All right, great, it counts flies. Have you ever seen Shrek? With that big sticky piece of glue board we rolls up. Yeah. So we count these flies on the glue board. So when we go into a food processing plant, we have to go one, two, three, five, seven, one, two, and count these things and actually report infestations. Well, the manufacturer that we buy the glue boards from actually produces a little app for us now as part of their value add services. And we go click and take a photo. And it goes, there's 23 blue bottles, four flute flies, done, mission accomplished. Yeah. That's a really good example of time being saved by technology, business benefits being derived by technology. So our business starts to look at um, how things were, what they can do to actually derive benefits. So if you think about manual process, you think about um, complex paper trails, time you spent on admin, the, the lack of quality that's introduced by shuffling bits of paper about. And actually start to think about, you know, you're a regulated business, you have to fill in forms, you have to do customer surveys, you have to do this paper with the customer, you have to send emails, etc. Uh, and we looked at this, so well, Google Docs can do this, Google Forms, your example earlier, how Google Forms can actually automate form filling. You, know, you enter the data once it's stored in a central place, it's immediately viewable, accessible, and collated for everyone. So we've rolled out smartphones to our pest control team, we've rolled out just under 1,200 smartphones now in the UK to every single one of our pest technicians on the road. See a medical guy, he'll have a PDA, he'll have a smartphone. Um, the majority of the forms that those guys use on a day-to-day -day basis are actually on that smartphone so they can fill them in online so there's no bits of paper floating by. With that, we've been able to take swathes of ad admin cost out of our business. Um, it increases the accuracy. It's one-time entry, it's not handwritten, you're not having to interpret people's handwriting it's there put on. Um, the use of apps, I mentioned the, the fly counting app. Um, we draw room plans on a piece of paper. We now measure them with an iPhone and take pictures. Uh, we do site surveys and we have to do sketch drawings. We take a photo and include that in the report. 
And this whole thing starts to look much more professional from the business perspective. And what that gives us is increased productivity because we're not shuffling paper around. Increased sales because it looks more professional. The customer's happier with it. The customer can actually see the picture, not the crappy sketch drawn that you've drawn. Um, it demonstrated it increased the sales. We've looked at the figures this year. Um, and it spends more time on value-added tasks. We've got a lot of people that run in the field. Um, I think 60, 70% of individuals are actually in the field in front of customers servicing or selling stuff. Um, and if we have to run around doing admin, coming back to the office, posting paper, going home, filling forms in, it's wasting their time. And they can actually spend much more time in with the customer. When we look at collaboration and engagement, this is really where um, Google Plus comes into play. So um, Google Plus communities, both closed and opened, actually start to share and publish information. So if you imagine you're a technician in the field, you found something, you're not quite sure what it is, um, you would typically get, go out to the van, you take a photo of it, you go back to the office, you put that photo on your laptop, you'd email that off to someone, or you print it off and give it to someone, they say, well, well next time you go back, you've got to treat it this way because it's a, a rear Madagascan cockroach or a German beetle or something. Whereas now, using the communities, particularly the technical communities, which are moderated by the guys in the back office, the scientists, they take a picture, they post it, and almost instantaneously, somebody will give them that answer, there and then, while they're actually on site. Uh, tell them what it is, how to treat it, what, what the infections cause, etc. And uh, again, I said hairy spiders. The one on the left there is a very big spider, but apparently it's a female British house spider. I can't remember the Latin name. Um, but apparently the female ones are the biggest guys. You have been warned. Um, so again, yeah, this is engagement the front line now. So you've not got a brick wall between your operation staff and your technical skill staff. They're in constant dialogue. There's open channels where they're able to interact. Um, the process is faster. You're not relying on that face-to-face -face engagement. And if you think about contacts, if you're on site and you find a lead, there's a customer here who looks like it might need washrooms, customer here looks like uniforms, customer here needs some pest control. You just post it on the site and it's picked up immediately by the sales team and actually processed. And again, benefits, shared learning, because somebody would have seen it before. If not, someone will actually go and look at that for you. Uh, that close relationship between the manager and the team, it, it's that instant dialogue, really. There's, there's no barriers, but you're not trying to ring people up and get stuff. Photographs, again, around about the quality and speed. Uh, and this, the project that we run is actually called Project Speed for that very reason. It's about being quicker and faster and more immediate in front of the customer. Yeah, by the time we've gone back to the office, generated a letter, sent it to you, another pest control company will be in front of you trying to sell that service, but we'll be doing it there and then on the day. And the biggest, um, the biggest benefit we've seen is, is Hangouts. Now, we, we, we appear to be the um, Google pin-up boys for Hangouts, apparently. Um, I think we've got something like 50% um, of our user engagement. We did 7,500 um, one-to-one or one-to-many video calls last month. Um, I've done the calculation in the business. I think only 10% of our business has actually taken up using Google Hangouts. 75,000 minutes of hangout call time in a month, uh, if you say it's about five or ten pounds for a hangout, we are actually paying for our Google subscription free every month in the cost savings and cost benefits that we make from just hangouts rather than going and running around and trying to find people. It's a pretty compelling business case. But the sort of stuff that we're doing with it is see something scary. Um, I'm not allowed to say which well-known supermarket that comes from. I did last time I got in trouble, so I'm not doing it again. Um, <laughs> But if you're out on site and, and as, a, as a technician, you see something scary about it, you can actually you know, contact the tech. You can hang out with the technical. So I've got one of these here. I'm not quite sure it is. Do I, do I treat it or run? <laughs> um, share some knowledge. Now, we, we, the, all of our technicians are smartphone or tablet um, equipped. Uh, all the information that we make available is actually now available online. It's packaged up so those guys can consume it. We've withdrawn traditional lines of communication. If you ring the office now and say, where do I find the telephone number? Where do I find the expenses form? How do I? They will say, it's like those IVRs. If you please look at www. The information is there, but it's actually in Google Plus. There's a link to it, and it's published to you, and it's there online, immediately available. You don't need to ring the office. Go and get it from there. So training, um, manuals, brochures, snippets of information, all shared in that way. Um, our, um, our sales team are actually not allowed in the office. I think that's the phrase Phil uses. It's probably a little bit more blunt than that. But, 
but they're not allowed in the office. Every time they drive back to the office, go and make a cup of tea, sit down, have a gossip, get the screen open, start working, is time that can be spent in front of the customer or time that can be spent with the front line. So I think, um, you know, McDonald's, customer site, wherever we can actually beg or blag Wi-Fi or decent communication, the guys will actually run their sales meetings somewhere, their one-to-ones somewhere, update the figures, team meetings somewhere. It really is saving a significant amount of money. Um, training. Uh, if you think about training in the regulated industry, we, we bring our techs in once every three months to get them trained for a day. So we take them out of the field, we put them in a hotel, we feed them, we water them, we get an expensive bar bill, we put them in a training room, we feed them, we water them, we send them home. Lost productivity. Okay. We, try, we, we record this stuff in snippets. Okay. You can participate on these hangouts actually from your local branch office that cuts down training and accommodation time. We can actually look at these after the event. Even to the point once you've done your training, you snap your little QR code that goes on your training record automatically. The work's done. This is all standard docs functionality that we're using here. It's all stuff that the business, not IT, have actually put in place. And of course, this is the most important thing of all. Last time I did this presentation, it was the day after Mother's Day. I was in trouble. But if you're in that meeting, uh, really important, you've got to go and break out and do something now. You just take the call. Yeah, your grandson, your mother, whoever, the VIP, chief, etc. But it's there, it's instant, it's available. And the power of actually face to face communication is really important. Why Google? Has anybody here got a WebEx account? How long does it take you to log into your WebEx and set it up? Yeah? Or Skype, or Windows Messenger, or whatever. Push a button, yeah, it's there. Okay, that's me done, guys. <laughs>